And to say to create this space, I mean, YPT had been going for five or six years before you started to create the space. Well, we always, I always looked for a space, you know, and uh, we did uh, 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 some things for weekends at a little theater called The Colonnade. You're probably too young to, I remember. to remember that, which had all of 125 seats. So you, but we did that still looking. And um, that's, that's always the problem. You have to first find a place that maybe would work, and then you have to try and get people. Do you remember what places you looked at? We didn't, uh, we didn't see anything. This was the first thing that we saw. We walked by by accident, actually. Uh, <coughs> and it was empty, but it looked so attractive from the outside. And then uh, I found out that it belonged to the city and what it was and that there was nothing inside except water. Water? <laughs> oh, yeah. A lot of water. Meaning it was leaking or? From the, no, from the, uh, from the lake underneath. So there were puddles of, of water. Like the Paris Opera. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, then, uh, then I talked the board into trying to see if we could get it from the city. And, and how was the city to deal with then? The, the city owned it and wasn't using it or anything. I mean, it was, uh, uh, um, so then we decided, to, I decided to ask um, Eb Seidler, with whom we skied a lot in, in uh, uh, Blue Mountains in Collingwood, whether he would be enticed to try and design uh, a space. He was an architect. Yeah. So we got uh, to go inside to look at this. And of course, it was an empty, wonderful space that was very moist and had, had some water in it. And he figured he could probably do something well, for maybe 300, 350 seats. And there was, so a, there was a floor all the way through? There was dirt. There was dirt? Dirt. But there was a, I mean, where that balcony is, was there a floor no. that went all the way across? No, or was it just no. an open space? It was just a wonderful open space. Wow. And to create a theater out of a disused building that belonged to the city, how did you work with City Hall? You said it wasn't a good atmosphere and John Sewell was the well, mayor. Well, uh, uh, John Sewell was a tough mayor. And uh, first of all, he didn't want a theater because he felt theaters all go bust and then he'll be stuck with this theater. So we had to go to Eb Zeidler and ask him whether he could uh, make the theater seating s movable so that we could show Sewell that if we couldn't afford to pay the rent, which is what he was interested in, that the theaters would disappear and he would have an empty place like he had before. Right, right. And uh, Eb Zeidler agreed. And this and is overnight 19... had to redesign it. And then we went back to the city and they charged us $15,000 plus $25,000. This is rent per year. Yeah. So $40,000 and we hadn't even opened yet. I'm hoping some of the people who watch this will also be uh, people who want to build theaters and create space, spaces and deal with city halls. How did you go at Toronto City Hall to convince them? Did you find allies, or was it just uh, Susan well, Rubish twisting uh, their arms? Or? No, uh, you, I went with the board. Uh, many people on the board were you know, lawyers, doctors, developers. Uh, and Eb Zeidler, who was very well known as a very fine architect, and who could show that he didn't charge us to design the theater. That was a donation uh, to the theater. So we looked pretty good going to the, uh, going to the uh, committee 
of which Sewell, of course, was head of the committee. And uh, we made a brief uh, showing that the children that we had played to in schools would be families that would like to come with their children right. on weekends. Uh, John Elder, who was a lawyer, wrote the brief, a wonderful brief. So it was difficult for them to turn us down because we were going to pay rent for a building that hadn't been getting any money. Uh, we were building a theater that uh, we felt children and their families would come because we had been in, in schools for years. So we felt that a lot of those kids would go home and say, right. we would like to go to the theater with you. So it, it was not a difficult thing to be turned down, particularly when we then showed that we can put the place back almost the way it was and if how we didn't, couldn't play the, pay the rent. And how did you raise the money to redo the building? Well, that's, that's a fundraising nightmare, but uh, you know, you have members of the board who go out and we went uh, everywhere because we had to raise almost $2 million. It's a lot of money a in 1974. Lot of money in those days. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> one of the first places I went to was the banks. And it was very interesting because uh, we went uh, with a member of the board to the Royal Bank. And I think his name was Fullerton. Mm -hmm. Charming, wonderful president. And uh, <coughs> uh, we again, we presented a brief showing what it would cost to run it and how we felt the money would come in and how many people would come and what we would do and so on and so on. And that we would go to all the other banks. And he said, you don't have to go to the other banks because the banks meet once a month and every uh, uh, chairman of a bank would bring forth what, uh, uh, what, uh, uh, groups had come to ask for money, and then they would t decide together. So there would be no one bank more and one bank less. They would decide how much of your uh, uh, budget they right. would give you, quarter percent, half a percent, one percent. I don't think anybody got more than one percent of their budget. And what were you asking the bank for, how much? We were asking the bank for half a percent. Which would have been? Which would have been, I can't remember. But <laughs> a in fair in amount. A half, half a million or the multiple oh, no, millions? Oh, no, no, less than that. <clears throat> Maybe 200,000. But you got that from every bank. Oh, I see. Then every bank. Five banks. I see, OK. And uh, then at the same time, you asked for them uh, once you were running, to give you some money towards your running costs. And in terms of Toronto and the arts and Canada and the arts, it was a time of trying to get the critical mass going and convince the commercial community that, and the public uh, community that really the arts are a good investment. How was, how was that atmosphere to deal with? Because you came to Toronto in the late 50s. Well, we came in 59. And uh, we had three children. And I said, well, since I'm coming to a Never Never Land from New York, I probably won't get a job because everything was very British at that time, a TV, radio. And the theater, too. And since I had a New York accent, and I didn't think I'd ever manage to have a British accent, I didn't think I'd get a job anyway. So I said to, to Jan, I'll look after the kids until they go to school. And once they go to school, I'm going to do something else. Preferably, uh, 
uh, run a children's theater. Uh, <clears throat> to go back uh, to New York, the only children's theater in New York at the time was at the 92nd Street Y, which did wonderful things, but the performances for children were abominable. And Annie Jackson and I used to take, at that time we each had two kids, we didn't have the third one, and we used to say, this is such awful stuff. We should really start a theater for children and do some wonderful performances for children, which we never did because Annie was uh, working a lot in the theater and didn't have time. And uh, I was still working a lot in the theater so and in TV. And so these were sort of things we talked about, but never did anything about it. So when I got to Toronto and looked after the children and wasn't going to be acting, uh, I thought, well, this is a chance to see what we could do.